Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Ashlyn and today we are doing a tour of my brand new office. We just finished my very first non-spare bedroom office and I am so excited to get to share it with you today. from home as a conversion copywriter for creatives. I do obviously a ton of writing. I do a lot of client work. I also do a good bit of education and recording as well, so I needed somewhere quiet. Having space away detached from our house over the garage that gave me some physical separation between church and state is ideal. I have a sweet six month old baby boy, but it's kind of nice to get away from him and the noises that he makes as well. I feel like I can finally focus. If you like this video as I go along, hit that like button below. That really helps me out. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you never have before. I release videos every single week and that's how you will be first to know when they drop. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have been talking about this home office build out for months now. When we first purchased this house, this is what this space looked like. I will never forget when we were just looking at the property, we came up here above the garage. It was unfinished, it was all plywood and beam and boards and my husband said ash this could be your office one day I remember thinking in that moment there's no way there's no way my business is ever gonna be successful enough or important enough for me to have my own office space that wasn't also a guest bedroom. Has anybody else felt like this before? Comment below if you have. Before we built it out when I was just thinking about it, I kept worrying, what if we go through all of that and my business fails? If we don't get any new clients, if I have to close things and we just spent all this money on a new space. But here's what I learned. First, I saved up big time for this. All last year in 2018, I knew that this is something that I wanted to do as I was pregnant and knew that one day I was gonna need separation so I saved up so we would be able to pay in cash for the renovation. I also knew that it would increase the property value of the lot that we're on. So I thought, well, you know what? At the end of the day, that's a great mother-in-law suite or playroom or something. I also learned this. Someone recently asked me, what would you do if you were the very best at your craft? That got me thinking about a lot of things. And what I realized is that as I was planning my office, I was planning on going budget Betty, like not even really decorating it much, just again out of fear, instead of using the money that I had in savings ready to decorate it. I realized that if I was the best, I would decorate it in a space that made me feel confident and comfortable when I flipped the recording camera on, when I talked to my clients over Zoom, when I had my team in, so I learned a lot. We worked with a team of contractors to finish it out. Now for inspiration, I looked a ton at my home office board on Pinterest, and last year I also worked with May May & Co for brand imagery. My sources of inspiration for my brand's visuals are the 18, 19 years that I studied classical ballet, growing up in the deep south in Alabama, an obsession with magazines and collages and journalism, which is what I majored in, art history and antiques. My grandfather was an appraiser for years, and I was one credit away from a French minor in college, have a deep Francophile heart. All of those things have been tied into my imagery for over a year now, so when I was thinking about this space and what I wanted it to look like, I knew that it wanted to kind of be those images brought to life. I hope that makes sense. I just, I wanted this space to be as me as possible. It's my little she shed. We finished out this empty space above the garage. We put in canned lighting. We put in a storage closet, solid flooring, as well as built-ins that were made custom and painted. We also put in a bathroom, which was a huge chunk of that budget. I was opposed at first because I didn't want to spend any more money on this than I had to but I realized that it would be a hassle to have to run across to the house every single time I had to go to the bathroom. My mother-in-law helped us find contractors and she's a realtor and that was a huge help. Most of the furniture I already had, it was in my old office. I'm asked constantly where my desk is from. I bought it just a few months into my business. It's from Ballard Designs Outlet. It's got a little character, some nicks and some dings that came along with it as well as some scratches. Doesn't matter to me, it probably needs a fresh coat of paint at some point, but I love it. The other desk was one of the first pieces of furniture I ever bought. It is now covered in calligraphy ink, but I kind of like the patina that it has. Most of the books I already had, I try to just bring office or work-related books over here from the house. We, and by we, I mean I have a lot of books, but I try to just keep it business-ish books over here. I got additional books at Scott's Antique Market. I also got a good bit of the things on the shelves from Target, again Scott's, which is an antique market here once a month in Atlanta, as well as One King's Lane. The latter, I'm not so sure about. I really wanted the Bell Library look. You know what I'm talking about. She was my favorite, still is. 
is. I'm not really sure. It is not load bearing. It is four quilts and I probably just need to save up if I want somebody to make one that's custom and moves and reaches up to the top. Can't win them all. Let's talk splurges. The French bistro chair from One Kings Lane was a definite splurge as well as the antique petanque set from the south of France that I got at an antique market. Some of the used coffee table books ran me a chunk and the rug was about $435 from Wayfair. For a full recap of where money went during this whole project, if you're interested in stuff like that, like I am, look down below. There is a link to the blog post for this video in the description box. While I type a lot as a copywriter, I also write by hand constantly. I journal, I keep paper planners and goal setting planners. I'm also a little bit of a school supply snob, so being able to have pretty paper, pens and stuff on hands and just be able to store them neatly in my desk drawers was important to me. I also needed to have tech stuff nearby. The rug and being away from the house has helped with sound to make these videos a little quieter. And for all of this, I tried to link as much as possible down there in the description box. If I've missed something that you see and you wanna know where it's from, from, please just comment and I will let you know. Now, I also booked and worked with the incredibly talented Abby Grace Photography for brand images of this space. We ended up having to push the shoot back until this was finished, which meant that we had the install and the brand shoot within the same about 72 hours of each other. So here we go, install day. This is gonna get messy. I was so sore after. Day one of getting it all together. And we're getting there. Okay, we've made it this far in the week. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, Abby. It's not gonna ruin your take. No, it's good. <laughs> this is what we've been, we're this delirious. We have been planning out all of the shots and color coordinating all of the outfits so we can shoot tomorrow. I do not know how you wedding photographers do it. We shot for about eight, nine, or 10 hours. I can't even remember, but it was an incredible investment. I've had a problem of matching my brand images. I have some great headshots of me, but they're all taken from different clients or different photographers. A lot of my clients are photographers, and so none of them matched when you put them together. None of them matched on my website, and I had these beautiful brand images that did not have me in them, so when I was trying to communicate what I did and how I write, I was left with nothing. Abby brainstormed an incredible shot list and shot all day. I'm so excited about the work that we did together. I typically hate having my picture taken. She made me feel really comfortable. Another thing that made me feel comfortable was working with my childhood best friend, Camilla, who helped style me in some different outfits, so I felt a little better about having my photo taken. My friend Ruthie does flowers now, and she also helps supply me with beautiful arrangements for the day. Again, I'll link Abby's info down below, and you can go to the blog to hear a little bit more about this part of the process and what it cost and why I think it was a great investment. Here's a quick pic of my first office. When I started, I was trying so hard to fit in. I really tried to go for that white and gold foil look that was in, but just not really me. I feel so settled in this space. It's my style, it's who I am, it's what I grew up with. And I'm really thrilled to step into a quiet, set apart space so I can concentrate, I can be creative for my students and my clients, and so I can shut the door at the end of the day and leave work over there and then go into my house and be with my family. Thanks so much for watching this tour. If you liked it, remember hit that thumbs up button and look down below to grab the blog link to this where you can get a full listing of items and where they are from, as well as a list of costs so you can see how much something like this would cost you in your creative business. See you next time.